See, my, my house behind me, that's a mess. Yeah. We're moving everything around so my computer is just like a last moment setup. <laughs> well, that's, that's a good thing about this, this show. It's kind of off the cuff, right? And that's oh, yeah. uh, kind of keep it as uh, generic as we can. Just like what you were just saying, was made it on the podcast, so that's fantastic. Yeah. And I can see your, your are they rats in the background? No, they're guinea pigs. It's the same thing. Hi, Leslie. Well, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're rats. They're rats. <laughs> they're rats. Go down. <laughs> well, okay, now that we've got the informal chit chat and that everybody knows uh, that, this, uh, just wanted to introduce here for episode seven of my Chaps Dark Side podcast. It's still pretty fledgling, uh, kind of uh, scrap heap kind of stuff you're going to listen to. Uh, this is Ron Knowles for RRLC, RRLC Paranormal. That's uh, Ron, Rory, Leslie, and Connor, Paranormal. Easy way to make it. It's a family affair. Keeps it nice and simple. You know, uh, you don't have to worry about having so many members out there. I don't know. Do you do you have any extended members, or is it still just uh, crew? Uh, that's actually interesting. Um, we're actually interviewing someone to come on board. Oh, so will you change it to like RRLCT? No, no, we're just gonna having everybody in the same house and having the same kind of everything like everything's cut between all of us so it's all one team one family member type thing right uh sometimes i guess it wouldn't hurt to have another fresh person yeah yeah some more contacts some different things going on i, th I think that can also get important especially if you have a case where somebody isn't inv isn't available uh you know i mean like i think that way up here i know that west with cops there's there's th there's three of them right and and being jail guards, they've got different hours they work, Shift, and, yeah. and uh, you've got to find the case where everybody can be at the same place. Uh, but it does make it easier, a smaller team, there's less uh, political bull, you know? Yeah, that, you know, we kind of all know each other, so... <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Riley's getting older now, so... Yeah, so he can do more, he can drive and all that. And, uh, yeah, but he wants to go do 18-year-old stuff right now. Uh, yeah, I find that too. Do you know what? A lot of my kids have been involved with us. It was cool when they were 13 and 14, and now it's like, just go away, you know? Uh, I, I, there, is a, there is a funny shelf life a lot of the times to what we do. You know, I mean, you do get uh, a coined term, an investigator. Which is basically, you know, you've got your warm body that shows up for an investigation, but only because it's cool. There's not, you know, evidence review doesn't exist, research doesn't exist. You know, if you've got a message board where you're asking for their input, it doesn't exist. They just want to be there for what what they're there for. And uh, that's what you're going to get with about 70% of the people that want to join your team. Uh, yeah. Until they've done about four investigations and realize that this is as boring as shit. <laughs> yeah, they don't realize it's not glam. It's not glam. And you're, never, not glam. And you're never dressed nice. And, uh, and the videos you make never look like ghost adventurers, right? You know, it's uh, it's pretty boring shit. And, and it's all about research. And really, the terrible side is is that a lot of it is disproving stuff, right? Yeah. And uh, I, I don't think when people get interested in the paranormal, that they're not there to disprove anything. They're not there to go to a client's house and, and say, uh, I, I think your house is fine. Because that's- yeah, they, don't wanna, they don't wanna look at the disapproving part where they, not all of it is unexplainable or, you know, it's not, you know, fantastic stuff all the time. You go in some places and it's nothing. <laughs> exactly. So tell me something, Ron, just uh, for the camera, I'm gonna explain to, to the crowd here. How did RLC come about? What got you involved with the paranormal and your history in the paranormal? Did you, know, did you bounce around for a while? Did you end up and how did RLC house RR could make it easier? RRLC. I, mean, I do it just to mess you up now. <laughs> I'm glad you just keep the name. How does the team come about? <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. I worked with another team as their tech manager. Um, I don't know how long ago now. Four, four years. Um, Four years? No, it's got to be around that. I don't know. Time flies. 
Um, I was a tech manager for them. Um, it's one of those things where I kind of wanted to go on my own. I wanted to more experiment on, you know, doing some equipment. And uh, you know how minds don't always meld together. Of course not. Um, I felt like, you know, I need to do a little bit more. Felt a little bit more advancing in what I need to do, and so uh, we had, you know, prior issues in the house or whatever before, and uh, like unexplainable things, which was actually really cool because it, it that kind of sparked the major, the major uh, go for us. Um, then we decided to just go ahead and do it. Have everybody involved because everybody was here when we actually had all the major commotion that we had, and we figured, well, why not? Um, doesn't hurt to have your kids there. Many people don't like it, but uh, kids can investigate. Well, a certain age, yeah. but yeah. I, my boys did really well, um, so I trusted them quite a bit. They are very mature when they go out and do stuff, so I like, why not? So we took about four four months to kind of put it all together on uh, how we're going to do things and, and get our name there and just just all the, the normal startup stuff, paperwork, um, getting equipment, like, you know, regular you know, just EVP stuff and whatever. Um, yeah, so it took about four months to get actually even put on anything that is social media. Right. Um, so that, that was pretty much basically the start of it. And we just little ran with it. Um, I made contacts with all sorts of people. Um, Actually, one of the first contacts was uh, you, because I was starting to build equipment. Right. You know, the, SC, <laughs> the SCS cameras for yes. the skills of tracking systems. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you were like one of the first people that actually contacted me. Um, that was pretty easy. You came down here, I threw one together for you, set up, the, set up your computer, and away you went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, and it should be said too that when you're speaking about your kids, uh, and people do often have a stink about having kids there. I've I've obviously investigated with you, uh, and and worked with uh, Rory and Connor. And, and you're right. I mean, like I, I'm guessing Connor was 13, 14. Yeah, something yeah, like that. Something like that when we investigated, and he was great. You know what I mean? Like I expected kids uh, to be really kind of jumpy and whatever. Uh, not at all. Actually, he, uh, he, he had a lot of uh, really interrogative questions and, and quite insightful, which I was pretty impressed by. Likewise with Rory. Um, so that was good. You know what I mean? I was all over that stuff. And especially, you know, being part of the family, you can kind of keep a, a close eye on that. And speaking of the STS system and all that kind of stuff, that's the other thing. I mean, you're obviously still, you do equipment, you built the STS that my, my group uses, still have, still use. Uh, still, still, as far as I'm concerned, still in beta test because um, I don't know. I'm still waiting for the golden unicorn to walk across the screen <laughs> instead of the hanging thing. Why don't you give me a bit of me a, too. you too? Exactly, but that's one of the things people don't realize that sometimes you don't use equipment for proof. What you're using equipment for is to disprove to test its limitations, to check its algorithms, to see, yeah, you know what, that's like STS, it works because it does exactly what it's meant to do, and that is the algorithm of it is, is it's to simulate or capture uh, moving body parts, right? And, or yeah. what could be. And uh, well, I see them, I'm having a hard time nowadays seeing people when they've got the mobile units. I'm thinking with the mobile units, man, they've got, they've got like these, the sensor eyes are just flying all over the place constantly and they're just going to be picking up false positives everywhere. Can you tell me, do you have a different opinion of the STS when you started building them? Uh, from now to then? Yeah. 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 It's a very, very, how do you explain it? You can mess that thing up if you don't hold it still. Yeah. If you don't hold it still, walking around, yeah, it's going to pick up legs of chairs, it's going to pick up... Uh, side of a wall. It's been, it's, 
<laughs> it's what it does what it does. It, it, well, it's and doing what it's supposed to. You, you need probably about a 15 to a 20 foot clear space. Right. Remember what I set it up yeah. at the hall. Locked up. I off. had it towards the deck, clear space, nothing showed up on it. Right, exactly. Locked yeah. off. Locked off completely. And yeah. you got to make sure that anything like, like drapes are a killer, right? Because it, no, yeah. it'll, 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 all of a sudden you're going to see this, this little stick man dangling from the ceiling and, and lots of people they live by that shit and it, it drives me crazy like if look, oh, look it's sitting in a chair it is the chair yes. that's what is mapping is it's, the chair it's waving at me yeah <laughs> no i'll tell you what if i have it set up on a neutral surface locked off i'm not in front of it there's nothing those eye sensor eyes are just like this something actually walks across the screen i will be impressed yeah. You see, here's the, uh, only time I had it do something that was kind of unexplainable is when I was in cannon knitting mills, and it did pop up in a clear space in the middle of nowhere, yeah. and it stayed for quite a while, and I wasn't moving. <laughs> so well, that's like the only time it really actually picked something up, other than yes, it was in a clear space, and it sat there and did weird things, but it wasn't catching on anything right so that may have been something <laughs> yeah but that's the one thing about about equipment right realistically 95 yeah. percent of my equipment is set to fail like if it pa if it passes and i get a positive result then that's that one case out of 50 that i've got something so like my proximity panels that uh, ben hansen and i sourced and i paid i don't know like what I would have paid for a friggin' Cadillac for them. I've used them on 100 cases. They've never, ever given me results. But that one day, yeah. maybe, right? And I guess one of the things is, and I know that Robert Bradley from CPRI, a team I worked with out of Virginia, uh, you know, he always talks to me about making sure you use the right equipment set for what the claims are, bet, you know, for the right experiment. Don't don't use 40 pieces of equipment when you only need six. And and he's right. And well, if somebody's passing down a hallway or whatever, well, the STS and those proximity panels might be perfect just to set up with a static camera, and let it sit, and that's it. Yep. You don't have to do anything. Hey, hey, Connor. Connor, Connor, Connor. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, teenagers, they don't care, do they? It's no. awful. Uh, so, uh, when it comes down to it, uh, what equipment we have, if you're buying this equipment for the sheer purpose of catching something, you're, you are doomed to fail. If you're buying equipment to test out a specific theory, Okay, um, like for example, the SB7. I hate that thing. That gives me a headache. Yeah. However, <laughs> no, it's been presented to me uh, from, you know, from those who are also experienced. There's a different method of using it. It's the SDS method there. Uh, you know, blindfold, headphones, somebody asking a question in a different room. I mean, I'll, I'll explain it to you offline. But it was, no, actually, I've done different ones. I've seen there. Okay. They do the headphones. They ask a question. It, yeah, I've seen different ways of them I using it. But like, it's okay. It's okay to try these things out. It's just really bad when people get out there and, and say, "Well, look, this K2 went off and went red. Your house is haunted." Oh. <laughs> Oh, my K2 is going off, but I'm standing right in front of the heater. <laughs> That's running my furnace. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I see that so many foul looks, and it just eats me up about people saying, oh, we have so much evidence with this K2, look at it go off. But their video camera is their phone. That's what I, I have to jump in there because my <laughs> biggest beef is they're holding the K2 and they got their phone and they're videoing it, doing a live going, look at it's going off. And you just want to just reach through and smack them. But so we have until they mix in two K2s or another one and they're both filming it and they're both going off the same way. It's like, shake your head. 
Yeah, it's unfortunate. What's even worse is seeing teams that have been doing it 15, 20 years that are still. Yeah. It's, look, I, I'm okay with, look, if a team's in their noob stages, man, that, that sounds like a really arrogant thing to say, but oh well. Um, if you've been at it six months, a year, two years maybe, depending on how many cases, and you're getting jived on by that, I'm not going to get upset with that because somebody's eventually, you're going to learn. But like 15, 20 years, a couple hundred cases in, you got to know that like a K2 is, I bring a K2 on an investigation. I throw it on the bed when I'm doing an EVP session. I've already done base reads. If it goes up to red, I'm not saying I know you're with me. I'm saying it's like a barometer. I might say, is there someone with me? That's okay. Yeah. And then if that matches up with audio and you get a nice 1A AVP or something like that, well then, hey, bang, bang, bang. Things go together. But to base a case off a, off a very simplistic thing like that, the K2s even for base reads are, ugh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Their, their range. Yeah, I, I, I like it to the point where sometimes it ties in with other equipment that's going okay. off. That, 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 that's even better. Yeah. At least it gives you some, yeah. some substance. Like, um, I actually enjoyed the one where we were in the basement yeah. at the place and we got that raw EVP. Yeah. It was funny because we both sent each other that same clip. Yeah, that's right. Back and forth. I got this. But the thing is, is we were all standing in a circle and we were all videoing everybody else. So you could almost tell that there was nothing else no one was doing in that whole situation. Mm -hmm. It was really actually, that was probably about one of the best raw VPs that you could probably get with video evidence of everybody in the room. Great. Because if, if she was, Andy wasn't catching these people, Riley was catching these people, but as you were asking that question, stuff started dying. <laughs> like Riley's camera went, and then it just kind of went on from there. Yeah, it wasn't very, it wasn't much. Yeah. But it was, it was, it was raw. So it, it's like I didn't have to clean it. I sent it to you. I didn't clean it. I didn't do anything. I just sent it a clip. Yeah, exactly. And when, when look, when situations and equipment and evidence all end up driving with each other that now now you sit back and you say okay here's some evidence i still won't say the word proof proof is a bad word but like yeah. you know this is interesting uh, and that one thing uh, and that and embarrassing your son was probably the the best part of the night you know with our dab or our dog or whatever the hell that's called mm -hmm. captain morgan dub was it that thing i don't know I know that Connor was pretty upset by seeing that, but oh well. <laughs> that, that, that's what being close to 50 gets to gets to make you do, right? Yeah. Things like that. So what? Uh, what's uh, what's in the future? I mean, what, anything happening right now? Or are you? Oh, what's in the future? Oh, we were going to go to the states to a couple places, but uh, well, that kind of got shanked over. Mm -hmm. um, kind of been just enjoying it. Bought a boat. I see. Yeah. <laughs> We've been just kind of enjoying the summer, like it, what, what we can. Our family owns cottages, so we had no problem going there. Yeah. So um, going forward, right now, as uh, well, I did a podcast. You got to be very proud. I'm actually talking. <laughs> I've done another. Yeah, me must did one with Phil for Unexplained Ink no. for Phantom right. Phil. Mm -hmm. Uh, Riley did some TV stuff. Yeah. Um, it's all about, I think it's more of we need to start getting out there more. Yeah. Um, as you said, I was a man of not many words. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not like a not personal person. I'm just like on, the, on our page, I won't put up all that other nonsense other people post on everybody else's pages over and over and over again. It drives me nuts. It's not my stuff. Right. Well, why would I want to put it on my page? It, it just It's just not me. Yeah. Um, so I think for more of uh, getting out there, making it known that we are there, because, well, everybody knows we're, well, we're out there, but I think it's a little bit more of a, that we're serious. Mm -hmm. We're not going anywhere. We didn't plan to go anywhere in the first place. But uh, you get over that certain so many year hump, you watch teams drop off. Oh, yes. 
well, we're not dropping off. <laughs> Even though people thought we would have. But there certainly is no shortage of drama within the paranormal community, is there? Oh, that drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've met this 25 years and this team's been around for 15. And uh, yeah, no kidding. I know that we've got, uh, now that stage three and all the COVID crap and all that stuff, in these unprecedented times, if I hear that saying one more time, I'm going to punch something. Uh, but you know, we're, we're take, we've got four cases upcoming before the year's end. Uh, Resi's and like we are, it, I think it's a good thing. I, and I think I think COVID's a good thing in a certain way because it's taught us that case management has to be more serious. It's taught us that we have to be more serious with the client. It's taught us to you know let's get what we're going to do set up before we go so we don't go waste a bunch of needless time there. And, uh, you know, to be safe and, and is the case worth the deal, right? So, you know, we're, we had to do an outside, an outdoor case. We haven't done those in 15 years and just take Sometimes I like to go out, outdoors and, and try some stuff. Yeah. But it's really hard for anything you like to catch audio. Yeah, no, it's like, <laughs> it was like I sent people up there and frankly, they were all newbies. <clears throat> they were all like under a year with the team. I'm like, oh my God, what's going to happen here? But you know what? They made, it, they made it work, and that, that was my big challenge to them, was like, we don't do outdoor stuff, and you're new. And some of this equipment, you've never touched. So, just see what you can do. And they made a pretty good job of it. So now we've got these four upcoming cases, and, and we're gonna try and do it as safely as possible, and, and all that, and try to get things back on the go. We've, obviously the States isn't gonna be yeah. I don't I don't foresee the border opening up this year at all. I'm okay with that. Things down there are a little crazy. Yeah. And uh, the, the whole presidential election, I think it's only going to get yeah. way worse. So, uh, classic shitstorm on the way, that's for sure. So, uh, why don't you plug? Do you have a... You have a Web, face, contact info, whatever you'd like to throw. Oh, for, uh, well, you... anyways, I'm Ron, and uh, IRLC, Paranormal. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram. If you need, go through Dave, he knows where I am. <laughs> um, yeah, if uh, you want to find out if there's anything unexplained around, um, I can definitely give you my opinion. All right, what area do you service? What area do you mostly service? Pardon? For that, just for the for the audience, what area do you service for mostly? What area, like? Oh, um, I'm in the Brantford area. Okay. Um, I do Southern Ontario. Okay. Basically. Yep. And I and I can I can uh, vouch for Ron. I've sent Ron cases, and have worked with Ron, and obviously I've had equipment built by Ron. So, RRLC is one of our key guys. And Ron, I want to thank you very much for being on this episode of Chaps Dark Side. And, uh, uh, it didn't hurt too much. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have it up uh, within a couple of hours, so keep your ears open. Yeah. Be good and be safe, buddy. Yeah, Ciao. you too. Same.